Alrighty, um, it's dark outside, there's no kind of atmosphere, we're all alone, more or less. Fun, 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 in the sun, sun, sun. I have some supplies, I have a mediocre of torches, and it's time to delve into the darkness. And that can just finish doing what it's doing. <laughs> run away! So, yeah, I'm trying to think about what to do today, um, and what to talk about. And I'm coming up blanks. Uh, so, um, I might talk about operating systems. I know, really boring stuff. But hey, they're the foundation upon which all other computing is built. Except possibly hardware. Hardware is not built on an operating system. Operating systems run on hardware. I know, it gets confusing at times. But in terms of doing stuff that will be of use or interesting... So I can actually reasonably just take all this out. As long as I don't fall in the lava again, of course. That would be unfortunate. So, yeah, operating systems. I mean, everybody knows either Windows or Mac um, as the operating system uh, that they primarily use, but there are others out there. Um, the actual history of the stuff kind of gets a little messy I suppose. No, not really. So, way back originally when I started computing back in the 80s, it was all, um, there were no op operating systems that were available to people who were not working at a university. So, it sort of restricted your access to a system by which you could do stuff on a computer. Um, you know, basically an operating system controls all the hardware resources and that sort of stuff. It gives a, a nice little environment to basically help you do stuff. I mean, these days we don't think about it, but, you know, back, uh, yeah, back in the 80s and early 90s, the only operating systems or close to operating systems that you could get access to uh, were the equivalent of DOS. Uh, if you don't know what DOS is, uh, download DOSBox and struggle with that. Um, there's a reason they're not really used anymore. But the cool thing is the com there was the command line, and the command line would basically allow you to access and do all sorts of funky stuff. Okay, that's kind of deep. Interesting. So, yeah, so um, the command line interface, or CLI as it's sometimes referred to as, would allow you to execute commands, get the computer doing what you want. It didn't always do what you wanted, or sometimes it did precisely what you wanted, which is not what you thought you wanted. I know, it gets confusing. But, um, yeah, the upshot is that you could script up or create a s complex commands, compound commands that would do large and complicated things. Why is this important in computing? Because when you get down to doing stuff with a computer, you need to be able to do all this magical stuff. Woohoo! Magic. And magic is another thing that tends to happen in computing as well. Trust me. Da 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 Diggy diggy hole. Diggy diggy hole. Diggy diggy. Diggy diggy. Diggy diggy. Oh. Um, I might want to just cool. Um, do I ha don't have any gravel? All right. Well, I'll just go. That's fine. And we'll just spade all this out. So, why operating system important? Well, there's a foundation, right? So, one of the claims of Macintosh users who use the operating I OS, Apple's. XOS or OS, the Mac OS, that's the one, um, will claim that it doesn't have viruses, but the, the hassle is that um, the Mac was actually, yeah, it doesn't technically have viruses as often. They're not as widespread, but that's because you've got millions and millions of Windows users 
And if you're a virus writer wanting to create something that will destroy or damage other systems, where on earth are you going to put your efforts? Into a niche operating system that doesn't have much interest from peoples or something that has global reach. And that's the, you know, that to me is the main difference between the two. Um, I do want to get to talking about Linux, but I have to talk about Unix first. So back in the 60s, um, when a lot of this computing stuff was first being developed and emerging, um, Bell Labs started building what, they, what became, became known as the Unix operating system. I'm not too sure what its standards stood for. It's been a while since I actually read the acronyms. Ah! Don't stand under stuff. I should know that rule by now. Um, yeah, so, yeah, as a result, the Linux, uh, sorry, the Unix OS, or operating system, was a simple command line sort of setup, no graphical user interface or anything fancy like that, and it gave you a basic way of controlling the system, controlling the resources, getting stuff happening the way you wanted. Now, this worked a charm. And it worked so well that people cloned it, copied it, and back then Bell Labs didn't actually license it, so it got out there for pretty much free. Actually, no, I think they had their own copy of it that you had to pay for, but people started writing up variations, uh, and clones or the equivalent thereof. And that will get us onto Linux in a little bit. So, as a result of this, other places started developing operating systems as well. Uh, Windows is one, as an example. It's actually very close to a clone of oh, a storm. Um, it shares their original DOS operating system or disk operating system, which was written for the commercial market back in the. I'm going to get this wrong. I know I'm going to get this wrong, but I think it's about 82, 83. Um, you can look it up yourself. You know, you have the access to the internet. Go use it for something useful. Um, yeah, so they wrote that as basically a way of doing things. And it was, you know, a great option for people who didn't want to, uh, who couldn't afford the full Unix or experience. And I'm going to seal that up. I don't want to have to deal with whatever's back there and that's going to go that direction when I shouldn't. Um, do I want the redstone? What use do I have for the redstone at the moment? Um, do I still have my bucket of water? No, it's empty. Ooh, okay. Time to get that bucket of water I was going for a little while back. It was just in here, I thought. Oh, don't want to see a super creeper. Anyhow, oh, this is where I was going to run to when I was bursting in fire. But obviously that's not the right spot. That's unfortunate. Maybe it's up. It just feel it's just round the corner on earth. Maybe I should actually just go topside and get myself a bucket of water. Yeah, so back to operating systems. <coughs> so, this sort of evolutionary process of developing stuff, oh, I missed that. I'll have to go get it. Um, was really, really useful. And uh, having a little bit of a, a knowledge of the history of this sort of stuff is actually kind of useful as well because you can see where things come from and possible weaknesses as well in terms of the security of those sorts of systems because there are still systems out there that were written in the 50s that are out still running these are what we refer to as legacy systems and there are not many people who are expert in the stuff that runs on them and that sort of stuff because of sheer old age it takes us all hmm, I heard a skelly bones wonder where it is anyhow um, yeah back to OS's so 
basically Linus Travolis, a poor Finnish student wanting to um, get a, a Linux style, op a Unix style operating system, couldn't afford it because he was a first or second year student studying computing. And so what he did is he started coding up his own. Um, and this then, oh, do I have a diamond? I don't have a diamond pick, but I don't have a diamond pick. Hmm. So if I get my buckets, I can. Do that. Bye bye, lava. Um, yeah, started writing this stuff and released it to the community under what would become known as um, uh, not a Creative Commons license, but a basically a common place license for the day, but allowing you to share, reuse, distribute that sort of stuff as long as you cite the original authors, including Travolis himself. And so the upshot is that that's kind of how Linux was born. It, it, there's a little bit more to it than that, obviously, uh, because you're looking at um, what has become decades of work by hundreds, if not thousands of people. So, you know, it's, it's actually quite a huge thing. But as a starting point goes, it gives an idea of what the, where the operating system came from. And since it's based on the older Unix style things, it shares a number of features with those operating systems. I've been here before. Woohoo! Um, yeah, and that, of course, gives you a common starting point with what how to do with this stuff. This goes on forever. My God. Anyhow. So, as a result of... Ow! That was straight to the head. I wonder how many I've got left. Um... Yeah, so as a result of wanting to share this for free, and the actual name Linux started off as almost a joke because he didn't know what to call it, couldn't call it, couldn't think of a decent name. So what he did is, well, this, you know, this is just my working title, blah, blah, blah. And so that's how it got named, basically. And, you know, not to diminish other people's work but he was one of hundreds and around the same time or actually no beforehand there was uh, Clifford's not Clifford Stoll uh, Richard Stallman who was developing uh, GNU Unix which similar sort of idea um, ouch I really should stop just randomly dropping free spaces like that um, and so a lot of those, and again, that was all open source stuff. And this is really what open source means, is that you can use the software as you see fit to do whatever you choose. And I'm getting myself really lost now. So I'm going to put that there, so stuff on that. Okay, this was not the way I thought it was. And more skelly bones. I'm going to get shot again. And this is going off into the dark. So, it's got to be somewhere this way. Yeah, so there's, like, in terms of open source community and the development of software, there's a lot going on. Um, and a lot of possibilities for getting hold of software that is actually completely legit, available to you, and in some cases, actually a lot better than the commercial offerings. Um, yeah, this looks like it might be a way out. This is why I seal stuff up so I don't get lost like this. Because I'm lost in the dark. I'm running low on food. 
uh, chomping at. Anyhow, I'm going to cut it here for the moment and we'll go on from later.